If you're using Loom, you probably say, what the hell is Ton talking about there? How can he compare Slack and Loom? For those of you who don't know Loom, Loom is a recording software or platform that is available as a browser, as a downloadable, download, downloadable version. You probably have seen several tutorials and things like that where people used Loom. Usually you have a person's webcam as a round frame in the bottom and then you see the screen and they explain you how things work. Loom is really straightforward. You can easily record and share information with others. And in fact, I'm saying use something like this. As I also using Snagit, I made a video about this. It's also a screen capture software and I actually use several. There's also Descript, ScreenFlow, Loom. Let me know if you want to know more about any of these. But this being said, why is this video now about don't use Loom? Don't use Loom if you're using Slack and there's a very particular reason. Productivity tools are really pushing forward and there's one movement that I see there which is making your videos automatically transcribe. So there was usually something like Otter where you were able to send your video to and it auto transcribes it. Nowadays the video platforms do auto transcription on their own. So for example, YouTube, they transcribe the video and provide you the auto transcribed captions for you to read the video if you want to. And then even auto translate it in any language that you like. So this was on YouTube, but now we have platforms like Loom. As soon you make this video recording, they transcribe it and make these captions available. And now also Slack does it. Now I can screen record using Slack. So for those of you who don't know what Slack is, it's a communication platform. I use it in the paperless movement business with my team and it's perfect for cross company collaborations with companies that also using Slack as the communication platform. And there are so many advantages. That's a whole video just about this. However, this being said, Slack is for many the single source of truth. This is where they collect information because everything happens inside Slack. And there was always the disadvantage that it is disorganized. So there's not like a so folder structure that you can apply text or anything like this. However, the search inside Slack is very powerful. So it's easy to find information. And for a long time, there was no option to audio record or screen record anything from within Slack. There were so many times where I would have preferred to just say an audio message to my team member to explain it better than just typing it out or I'm on the way. It's easier to just communicate this. Even if this would have been available and there were some workarounds and other tools that you could use. I haven't done it. Why? Because what I'm saying there won't be searchable. I wouldn't be able to find the discussion later on when I'm searching for this. Well, this changed. Slack implemented audio recording, but also video recording. So you can screen record now, but with the advantage that your audio recording and your video recording become searchable. So it transcribes everything and becomes searchable. And it is a very powerful way how you can search it because it doesn't only show you the video where you mentioned something in, but also the position inside the video or audio recording where you set this or your team member set something. And this now makes it very powerful. If you're used to use Loom to explain something and now we come in the area why I'm using several different tools for different types of recordings and tutorials and my courses and so on, they all have specific superpowers. So if I would use Loom to make these audio or video recordings and then I paste it into Slack, which probably many of you do, this works of course and you can click the video and watch it within Slack, this is great, but it is not searchable. So also Loom is transcribing your information that you say there, it won't be searchable by Slack. And I think this is really a disconnection. If we could overcome this, the, the company, you know, like having a standard that everybody can connect to the information that another platform provides, in this case, the transcription, this would just change everything. If there would be a way that Slack can access the transcription of the Loom embed that I have there, this would just change everything. But for now, this is not possible. And this is the reason why I made this video and make, just wanted to make you aware if you want to build up a knowledge base inside Slack and if you're using audio recordings or video recordings, it's much more effective if you're using the native recording functionalities inside Slack. This being said, as I said, I'm still using Loom. It's not as easy to share. So for example, inside the Paperless Movement community, let's say you reach out to me and you ask something. I always want to provide the best answer. So I usually do 
do a video response to explain more complex things or even show the things on screen. In this moment, I'm using Loom because it's much easier to quickly record it. So there's no rendering or that I need to export any files. It's just recording. It's available online. I will just paste the link and it's available. So this cuts down the editing process and all this so much. Whereas for this YouTube video, I'm recording it on a DSLR and then I have to copy the files to my MacBook and then work on the MacBook and then export it and then upload it. And this takes, well, hours. For the Loom, I hit record it's available, paste it, done. So this is the reason why it's very easy for me to give video answers inside the community. It's the same for the group coaching course. I put a lot of effort into editing the group coaching calls. So the replays is not just a plain recording of the group coaching, which just takes up your time. Well, I edit it and I chapterize it. So it makes it already easier for you to go through the video. But also I put keywords below the video and also the key topics that we discussed below the video. So these words become then searchable for the members. So when you're looking for something inside the Papers Movement community, then this video would also show up in the search results because I use these keywords below the video. And then I refine the video in a way that's easy digestible for you. This is just the quality standards that I set in the Paperless Movement. And this is the same for video replies that I always provide written context so it becomes easy to search. So what did you learn now in this video? Should I use several tools and all this? No, this is part of i Mastery. i is something that I teach inside the Paperless Movement membership and defines a productivity system end to end, how to set your conventions and so on. And this is a great example where you realize the capabilities of the tools and then use them in the best way possible for your own productivity system. Having Slack, you probably didn't know that you can do video recording and audio recording. And if you heavily rely on this tool, why do you need another tool? Do you actually need Loom to have an additional external source where you can share videos or is Slack enough for your team communication? But then rather use this because you can leverage the information more instead of mixing the tools. So I'm actually telling you the opposite here. So you can use less tools instead of have several tools for different purposes. And by going through the i Mastery program, you will realize exactly this for your own setup. And I hope I was able to give you some aha effect in this video again and there are several more videos to come and there's so much more that I will share you in the future. So if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss what I have to tell you there. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends or your team and I'll catch you up next time.